Well, your headline talks about margin weakness, but there are so many other issues uh, at play here. Cash burn, cash yeah. raise, Musk's own future. Uh, where do those rank in, in your lists of, uh, list of, of concerns and worries? Look, I think the most important thing is the cash burn rate. I also think the margins are going to be important. And I think what people need to look at and what need, people need to consider, which we think they haven't, is the fact that they did this accounting change. Now they're, they're basically listing more of their leases as um, uh, direct auto sales. And if you look at the difference between the margins of the leases and the automotive sales, in 2017, lease margins were 36 percent. Automotive margins 21 percent. So we think there's going to be a hit on the margin line. We also think the Model 3 ramp costs are going to be significant. So we think there's a disappointment coming um, on the margin line. So we'd be looking for that. Stocks at 300 bucks, though. I mean, it's like a talk to the hand from from Wall Street to the haters, right? I mean, what's going to change that narrative? They're giving you the Heisman repeatedly, yet people still hate on the company. Right, right. So, look, the issue is last year you had the first 100% battery electric vehicle car with over 200 miles of range. This year you have four more entering the market. Next year you have 10 more. So I think as competition enters and you see a slowdown in Model S and X sales and potential, potentially Model 3 sales as that competition enters, I think you're going to get some guys starting to shade or, or fade the stock, if you will. So I think that's the real catalyst to get this stock to fall. We need to get past this 5,000 cars per week production rate and see if they can be uh, profitable at that at that point, which we don't think they will. And once we get to that rate and we see what the competition means, we think people are going to start to fade the stock. Did you happen to catch Jim Chanos on Squawk Box uh, last week when he was uh, talking about Tesla? He, he's uh, like the headline um, uh, critic on this stock. Did you catch that interview? Uh, I, did, I heard about it. I didn't catch it. So I'm going to read you a piece of what he said I, of Musk. I think he's going to actually leave as CEO. I think he's going to move over to SpaceX. What do you think about that? Is he in it for the long haul, do you think? I, you know, I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. I think Tesla is his darling. There's been conversations and discussions that if Tesla get, the stock price gets too low, they're going to merge SpaceX. And the problem with that is SpaceX effectively can't help them make cars profitably. And I don't think SpaceX shareholders would be for that. But him leaving the company over the near term, we don't see that as a possibility. Steve Weiss. So, Gordon, don't you think that when they fully integrate the, the two companies, that being able to sell solar panels will take this stock to a thousand dollars a share. Obviously, I'm being <laughs> facetious, but uh, what uh, happened to that? I mean, to me, you know, I don't think you're being harsh enough. This is a, this is a, a governance nightmare, and that class action still going on about that combination. There's nothing going on here. If you looked at, you said now, Elon Musk. We know he's a genius. We know he's a brilliant, great inventor, innovator, etc. But the corporate governance side is just crazy and just flashes warning signals everywhere. Do you take that that's into account in looking at your uh, price target? We do, and that's a good point. You know, there's this lawsuit outstanding, and they added some more, essentially, defendants, if you will, to the lawsuit. These are former Tesla employees who basically stated some things that, effectively, they knew that they were going to do uh, 5,000 cars of production when they were saying they were going to do it last year. And with respect to Tesla, look, we covered Solar City, and we effectively had, a, essentially, a $5 price target on the stock, and Elon Musk came in and bailed them out. The question is, do the shareholders care? And I think at this point, unfortunately, the answer is no. But I think as the stock price falls, you're going to get a lot of people looking back at some of these promises he's made, including the profitability in Q3 and 4 of this year, which we don't think they're going to be able to get to. And I think that's where you'll get some of the, the, the lawsuits, et cetera. But I think what really kind of really pressures this stock, in our view, is the competition coming in. And if you look at the, the Chevy Bolt just last year, again, the, the, the first 100 percent battery electric vehicle car with over 200 miles of range. Tesla said they were going to grow their one half 17 sales by 66 percent. The number was actually 6 percent. And if you add the bolt sales to their numbers, it jumps to 45 percent. So competition is real. And we think there's real competition coming this year. You have the, uh, the Audi, e uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Jaguar e-tron. You have the Porsche e-mission. These are all amazing cars uh, that we think are really going to pressure Tesla. Yeah. Uh, is this a reiteration or is this a new call? This is, uh, this is a new call for us. We recently initiated on Tesla. Um, the reason why people ask us, why did you take so long? Because we wanted to see the competition come in. Um, and we think that, you know, they have this, keep in mind, they have this debt maturing next year, March of 2019, where if the stock price isn't at $360, that's roughly a billion dollars they're going to have to uh, come up with. So we think there's big risk near term and big risk early next year.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.